Thank you for being part of this study. We're looking at vector geometry today. This is lecture number eight, Dr. Emanuel's. We're going to be looking at planes, vectors, lots of different things. To get started, we have to look at some vector review. We're going to be looking at dot products and cross products. So we're going to go over review. We're going to go over a particular dot product and cross product of the following vector. Okay, when we do the dot product, as you can see here, we're going to multiply the I components together from the A and the B vector. So if we multiply 2I times I, we get 2 times 1. Then if we look at the J component, we look at 1 times 3, then we're going to add that to, under the K component, a minus 1 times a minus 2. And we get 2 plus 3 plus 2 equals 7. Now, we're going to look at cross product. When we look at dot product, Remember, whenever we look at the dot product, we're only going to be get as a scalar. We're just going to get a magnitude, a number. When we look at cross product, we're going to get an actual um, a perpendicular matrix, a perpendicular vector to the two vectors that we're looking at. Okay? So... When we do this, we have to look at what we've been looking at before, uh, minor matrices, and we look at the cofactors. Okay, so we would like to look at I. Okay, so then we'll remove the first column, and so we'll just be stuck with the caddy corner here. Okay, so that's where we have our I. And then the same thing with our J. We'll remove the J and... We have um, vectors, notation, and we have to do a minus in front of the J. And as you can see, we get 2, 1, minus 1, minus 2. And then we do for our K, the same thing. And we'll wipe out the K column and the first row. And we'll just get 2, 1, 3, 1, 3. Okay, then we will cross multiply at this point. When we cross multiply, we'll put everything under the I value, which would be a minus 2 times 1, minus a 3 times a minus 1. Then remember, we have our J factor, so our J will be negative. And then we will um, multiply 2 times a minus 2. Then we'll multiply 1 times a minus 1. Then for our k, we're going to cross off the last column, the k column, and the first column. And we'll just get our 2, 1, 1, 3. And this, at this point, as you can see here, we'll just multiply these numbers times each other for our I component. As you can see, it's 2, 1 times a minus 2. And so, with this, we'll be able to actually get our C value. And with our particular C, this new vector that we have is be perpendicular to 
the plane of A and B that we're crossing. C will be perpendicular to those two, the planes. So, if we remember correctly, when we use the right-hand rule, C is perpendicular to the plane of A and B, and also to the vectors A and B. The next area we would like to look at, we're going to look at the analytical geometry. We're going to look at it from that perspective. So, let's see here what we have. We have vector view of analytical geometry. Okay, we're going to take an example. This example is going to have, we have two spots here that we're going to show. And the first one will be position one, the other will be position two. And we'll be looking at it from this viewpoint, from our origin. So we're going to compare this to a star system. Okay, let us say a star is moving in space from point one to point two along a path of vector A. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So we have vector A here, and we're looking at the first point, and then we'll see as time moves on that it's going to move to a second point. So we would like to know how to be able to solve this. And so the first thing we do, we're going to be looking at B. We're also going to look at B to make a look at our first R, R sub 0, our first indication that we can see. And then we're going to look at it again over time. As time went on, then we're going to see that this particle, it could be an electron or it could be a star. But here we're looking at a star that is moving in space. And so what we want to do is um, you can add tail to tail. So if you have this one, which is um, A and B, see as you can see you have B here, and it goes from this tail to the other to A. So this is A plus B equals C. And we can rearrange it such that we would like to get A by itself. We like to line up this path here this line and so when we take A to the other side we have our R sub 0 or rho sub 0 and our rho. Now when we look at this we can also rearrange this and so what we have is we're looking at X minus x at 0 for the x comp for the x component or for our i we, and then the same thing for our y we have y minus y0 and for our z we have z minus z0 and we have rho and a this area here this line we'll be looking at these vectors rho, sub zero, and rho. Well, let's take an example so that we can get a better understanding of this. So we see again point um, P zero going to P, and we're over this area, this line or this vector A. Find the path or line of the star passing through the points P sub 0 at 4, 5, 5 and at P at its final resting point 1, 6, 10. Vector A goes from, as we had mentioned, from point A, from point P sub 0 to point And we looked um, a little earlier on the last slide that we were able to look, solve for A. 
and we found that it was for rho minus rho sub zero. And so what we're going to do is take these two, and we're going to subtract them. Okay, and so we have our one, our four, or minus four, then we have it for our x component or our i, then we have six minus three, and then we have ten minus five. Okay, so that gives us a minus three i plus three j plus five k. The next thing we like to look at is lines. We have several ways to define a line or path of a moving object. Paramnetic um, form, that's what we're going to use. We have here, we have rho equals rho sub zero at a t. a is a vector, and we're going to multiply this vector times t, and t is a scalar, nothing but a number, a constant. Now, it makes it interesting that we can use this, this formula later and this T to help us to solve some um, other type of equations that we use in math, in science, and physics, and engineering. Okay, so the components for our A is our A and B, okay, for our X and Y coordinates. And for our row, we have x of 0 and y of 0. And so as you can see that on this straight line, okay, or on this path of a moving object, it's going to move within time and we'd like to calculate it and how much time it will take. So what we see here is that a and rho are minus rho of zero, that the two of them are on the same line. They're parallel to each other in the same line. Okay? And so, basically what we want to do is rearrange it such that we have rho as it relates to x and y. And then we have rho sub zero as it relates to our initial conditions, our x at zero and y at zero. And so basically, as you can see here, you can see that for your um, matrix, for your vector A, you have an x component, which is A, and you have a B component, which is B. Similarly, you have for the rho minus rho sub zero, the same thing. The change in x over the change in y. Okay? And this is what we call symmetric equations for a straight line. And so basically all you have to do is that you take these two formulas. Okay? And you can draw a line underneath them. Okay, and if you draw a line here and divide one over the other, the t's will cancel out. Okay, now once the t's cancel out, now basically what you have is the formula that you have below you. That proportionate, the proportion of the change of x is the same as the change as a. And the change in Y is the same as in B. Or, as we remember correctly in our algebra class, we have our change in X, our change in Y over our change in X, which equals our slope of the line. And so, as you can see here, this is the same thing. This is the slope of the line. So we're going to continue on in 3D for lines. Okay, so now we no longer just have it one way. Now we have it 
in three dimensions. Okay, we have our paramatic equation for a straight line. And we're looking at A, and A is this line that we have in space. And so, how do we solve for X, Y, and Z? Okay, we use that same formula that we had before. So right here, what we have is our x is equal to x naught plus a at t. And so we'll be able to divide them again, and the same method that we used before. You can divide them and cancel the t's. Then you can solve for the change of the x component, a, the change in the y component, b, the change in the z component over c. Okay, let's do an example here. Okay, find the equation describing the position of the star at any time in the heavens. With the star starting at r sub 0 at the point or the position at 1, 2, 3, and moving through the vector. Okay, so we're going to be looking at what vector is it moving through. So as we can see here, the vector that it will be moving through is vector A. So what would it, what it will be at P0, and then it will change at a certain time, and then it will change again, and it will change again, and it will keep changing over time. And so we can write a formula for that. So we have our line vector, an equation for our vector. Then we set up our parametric form. And so, basically, what we have is 1 plus x equals 1 plus 4t, y equals 2 plus 5t, z equals 3 plus 6t. Now, all of these will depend on what time or t, okay? As the time moves on, as it moves in space, so does your position in your x, y, Z coordinates. Okay, now we're going to look at the planes. Okay? And find out things that are normal to our plane. Or perpendicular to our plane. So we have the vector again. Vector R or rho minus rho sub zero lying in the plane. As you can see here. All you need is two points, and two points will give you a straight line, and then you'll have, you'll be able to rotate it. So two planes. The vector n is normal to the plane surface. So as you can see here, this is perpendicular. Whereas we have the perpendicular normal line is going to be the dot product. So we went over dot and cross product already. Now the dot product, the dot product is give you the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. Okay? The angle of 90 degrees, because that's what you're looking at perpendicular, will be zero. Because it starts off at 1, and then it decreases down. Okay, the equation of a plane is given by this equation. As you can see, we have the normal component. That's the perpendicular component. Then we have the change in the x as it relates to the n component, and then we have the perpendicular component times y minus y0, and then we'd have the same thing, the z component for it, for the normal, the perpendicular line that crosses the plane, and we have z minus z0. 
And all of that's going to equal zero because the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Okay, we have a similar procedure that you do for a two dimension. All we do is find a perpendicular line. So let's go over another example. Find the equation of a plane perpendicular to three points. Okay, we have our points A, B, C, and a vector joining any point. What is a vector? It joins any points of a given, uh, uh, any pair of given points lie in the same point. So you have one plane, if you can find two points in there, then you can develop a plane from that. Okay, so let's make up some vectors here. Okay, let's make up some lines. So we're going to connect two of them, A and B. Okay, and so as we connect A and B together, as you can see, you get here as we get 0, 2, and minus 1. Okay, so if you subtract these, as you can see here, remember that's what we did earlier. So if you subtract these two, you get zero, one minus one, minus a minus one is zero, three minus one is two, and zero minus one is a negative one. Okay, so then we're gonna come up with a, a, a second line okay and so the second line is we're combining a and c together okay and we get one zero one okay so now what do we need to do we would like to do a cross product of the two vectors if they're perpendicular we need to get something perpendicular to a plane Okay, so again we have N coming to our rescue perpendicular. And so remember we need to do the cross product. And when we do the cross product, we this deals with the um, sign, the sign of the angle in between them. And if they're parallel, And that's what you want. If they're parallel, they're not going to cross. And if they're perpendicular, they're going to cross at one point. Okay, so we talked already about how to do a cross product. So we're not going to labor, belabor that point. So you have your X, your Y, and your Z components. And as you can see here, we're going to get 2i minus j minus 2k. Okay, now we would like to find the distance between the point and a plane. Okay, so you have this plane here. And what did we say before? You just need two points. Okay, you have two points. You have q and r. Okay, and we want to be able to get a perpendicular line in reference to this. And so we want to know what the distance is from these areas. Now if we use Q, that's going to be too far. We would like to use one that is perpendicular to P. Okay? And so if we can get the normal one, which is perpendicular, a general one, which is a unit normal, okay, of a perpendicular, then we can use that here with our R. Okay, so R is the point of a close, the closest approach. Okay, so R, as you can see, we're going to find this distance. This distance Q, PQ is farther away, but we just want to find the real distance between a point and a plane. Okay, so what do we need to do? Okay, we don't know what R is, 
But hey, we're given Q. So that's something that we can get started with. Okay? Find some other point on the plane. Okay? Also, we make a vector and we take the absolute value of it. its magnitude. Okay, so then we want to find the normal unit vector, little n. Okay, so now, if we are able, we can find what PR is, if we can um, take the dot product of this particular vector, PQ, versus the one that we're going to have now, we're going to take the normal of that. We're going to get the perpendicular line of unit, as it's called, unit vector. Okay? That's what we are going to be finding. The normal unit vector. Okay, let's do an example. Find the distance from P, 1, minus 2, 3, to the plane, 3, I minus 2J plus K equals a negative 1. Okay, the next thing that we want to look at is where R is in a position that is the closest. As we mentioned, R is the closest. Okay, but we don't have the position for, for R. So one point that's on the plane, like we said before, any point that's on a plane, if it's on the same plane, then they, you can use them together. Okay, because it's just a proportion of that. There's another constant times that number that's giving you your specific vector. One point on the plane is Q. So we find Q and that satisfies the equation. So now we're going to look at PQ, okay? And we're going to subtract P from Q, Q from P. And this is what we get, 4J minus 3K. Now from the equation of the plane, we can get the normal vector, okay? So for us to get the normal vector, as you can see here, we're taking this particular position of PQ, this vector. Okay. In the beginning, we're given a plane. Okay. So we have the plane already. And then we're going to find the unit vector, the normal unit vector, by dividing the magnitude, dividing the normal by the magnitude of N. Okay, and as you can see that this is 3 plus 4 plus 1, which gives you the square root of 14. Okay, so now that we have P and Q and we have our normal vector, we can use them, the multiplication of the dot and then we'll be able to find PR. So, as you can see here, you have to find out, like we did with the determinants, but this time we're doing it with the normal absolute value of n. Okay? And so what we're doing is we're taking this, and then we're dividing it by the square root of 14. Okay? So when we multiply all of this out because it's a dot product so I told you it's going to give you a constant okay and this constant you look at it and we're just going to it's going to equal 11 and we're losing the absolute value so it will become a positive 11 over the square root of 14 now we're going to move into distance between points and lines Okay. Similarly, what we need to do is what is PR? There it is right there. 
and have P, Q, and the unit vector. Okay, so now we're going to do an example. I think we got some like six, seven examples up here that we'll be going through. Okay, we want to find the distance from P, 1, 2, minus 1, to the line joining P1. And we're using P1 as the origin, 0, 0, 0. Okay, and then we have P2, which is a minus 1, 0, and 2. And so we're going to let our, our line that we're talking about, which has those two points in it, okay, which has these two points, we're calling that A, and as we can see here, it's a minus 1I plus 2K. This is the vector along the line. Then a unit metric along the line is needed. Okay, so how are we going to do the unit metrics? Not matrix, sorry, I keep getting mixed. Same matrix. The vector. So what we have here is that we take the value of it, of the normal, and then we divide it by the square root of 5, which would be the magnitude of your normal, of, of your vector. So as we see here, let us take Q to P, where P is equal to 0, 0, 0. Then we have P and Q, or PQ. Okay, we have a minus 1, minus 2, 1. That'll give us that specific distance. That's what we want so that we can get the distance of P and R. So we have P and R. It says P and R will be equal to, once we have the unit vector of the perpendicular line, and we're going to now use that across this line. Remember, we want to find the distance between the line. Okay. And so... When we multiply all this out, I wanted you to be able to see it so you can see how it's done. Because you'll be doing examples yourself in class. Okay? So, the same thing that we've been looking at. We know how to find the unit. Okay, we have P... PQ. Notice where we have that unit vector. There it is again, that unit vector. There we go. And we're going to cross it with the other line that we know that everything lines up with. That it is at, that the um, plane is, is laying on that particular line, on that particular vector. Okay, and so as we do the cross product here, we come down and we do the same thing and we'll come up with the square root of 21 over 5, the square root of all of that. Okay, the next thing we would like to look at, the distance between two lines. Okay, we have P here and we have Q here. They're nothing but points on two different lines, okay? And so the distance is closest as it approaches the normal, as we are able to see. As you can see here, this perpendicular line, that unit normal, line that you're seeing there that's perpendicular to these two lines and these two lines make up a plane. Okay, so we need to look at how to solve this particular problem because some people just get lost in it. Okay, 
So basically all it is is that we're taking A and B. There's A and there's B. And we're going to cross them and then we're going to take the magnitude of the cross. Okay, so we're moving to an example so that we can try to solidify it. Find the distance between the line R and now we have added to this R we have what we talked about earlier the A times the T B times the C to C times the T. Okay, so what do we have here? Find the distance between the line R equals I minus 2J plus I minus K. Okay, and then we have for, that was for one row, and then we have another one. Okay. And this is 2J minus K. That's that component. And then we have over here, this other component. In the K factor, as you can see here, this one has just the J minus the I. But remember, it's multiplied by that constant T. So that will push it off or on the line such that it be, it, it'll be on your same plane. If we write the first row as row equals row sub zero and plus our a t. Okay, remember t is nothing but a constant. Then the head of r sub zero is a sample, is a simple choice for p. Okay, and that's what we're going to use. So we have P here, then we have with that P the associated A, which is a line. Then we have some similar for the second line. Okay, now we're using it for Q. Okay, and in Q we find out, boom, that's 0, 2, minus 1. Okay, so with this, what can we actually do with all of this? Okay, now we're going to take the cross product. I assume everyone in, in my audience is listening and does have taken calculus, differential equation, and all of those type of things. Okay, so similarly for the second line, what we have here is B equals J minus I. We have Q here. We have this point. And now we're going to cross the, we can cross the A matrix. Okay, so we have A cross B. And as we can see here, this is just going to give us I and J times the square divided by the square root of 2. And then we do the same thing. I mean, now, now we said that we want to be able to find the distance between what? Between the lines. Okay? And so now what we want the distance between the lines. Okay, we have a few lines here. Or we, or, or we have a few vectors here. Okay, so the distance between the line, okay, now that we're able to do the cross and be able to come up with that. Now, when we find the normal, we have to find the normal 
as we mentioned earlier, so that we can find out what the perpendicular line is. Okay? And so, here's the mathematics again. Okay, so let's look at example number six. Find the distance between the line R equal to I minus 2J plus I minus K, that quantity, times T. Okay. So the first thing that we have here is R. Okay. That's our given. Okay. If we write the first row as R equals row sub zero plus A T, then as we connect the head of the A sub zero, it becomes a simple choice for P. So we have now P. And we have our A. Okay, our A is just two components, our X and our Z. Not a, not a Y component is not added. Sim, sim, similarly, from the second line, we can get, we're creating our own lines now. Okay, so we get this point here. Okay. Okay, so now what we want to look at is the cross product of A and B. Okay? So we have A and B. Okay? And then we want to be able to find their normal. Okay, and we find out that that's right here. It's a component in each one, our i, j, k, all divided by the square root of 2. And why is the square root of 2? Because that's the normal um, factor that we will find for that particular one. Okay, so here we have our p. We come down here with our specific p. E, Q, okay, and the distance between the line is, when we take the normal of P and Q, it will give us two-thirds. Now, what we want you to do, we have here some practice problems, but we want you to practice. Find the symmetrical equation and the paradigmatic equations of the line through two, three, four, and 5, 1, minus 2. Same thing we want you to do the next practice. Find the plane containing the origin and the points. We'd like for you to find the distance from the point minus 2, 4, 5 to the plane. What is that distance? to the plane of 2x plus 6y minus 3z equals 10. Okay, the next problem we would like for you to look at is find the distance between the line, R, which we one of the last things we looked at, and a parallel line going through point 3, 1. Then we ask you to um, also do another problem. Then we said find the distance between the lines. So what we were trying to do is be able to introduce the new theory to you. That's what I was told. And then for you to be able to go through some problems with you, then give you problems to do. Yes, that's how we're going to do it. That's what I've been told. Okay. We'd like to thank you for being part of our study. We'd like to thank you, 
and we hope to see you again. Enjoy.